everyone and welcome back to computer vision lecture series this is lecture 10 part 2 we continue talking about uh, the basic concepts of uh, structured light last time we saw that there are uh, for for generating um, depth depth maps from uh, using structured light concepts we already have information uh, in the sense of we already know uh, the geometric arrangement of the camera the, and the source of the structured light so we already know the geometry we have already uh, we have already seen the uh, algorithms which can compute correspondences using this information uh, using uh, information in this kind of geometry uh, so here in this case for example uh, we replace one camera and we use a laser light source which is called a single strip scanning because a laser can uh, project only single line uh, very coherent strip of line and therefore it is called single strip uh, camera and scanning means that the objects are either on the conveyor belt or the source of light is moved along the objects but uh, usually in the industrial settings the objects are moved along the conveyor belt and the source of light is fixed and there is already a camera CCD camera which is uh, taking images of these moving objects and uh, accordingly when the objects move their profile or their height profile or the depth profile in the 3d world is generated and captured and recorded by the ccd camera using the um, already discussed correspondence algorithms so it is very easy to locate this single strip of line uh, lasers are also very cheap and um, this setup is pretty simple to do and you don't need high quality cameras either so this is a very robust uh, technique for getting very precise or very accurate um, measurements of depth so essentially what we do is in this optical triangulation uh, triangulation strategy for example we have this curved surface uh, please do not consider this red lines but uh, these red lines are the projection of this source this uh, strip line source uh, which in our case is a laser right now and the surface is this curved surface that you can see and the curvature in this red line and what we do is and we already have the camera location uh, with respect to the source and we move the source along this surface and then we capture the location of each and every um, uh, each and every strip of line along this surface when it moves from the camera and um, when this, uh, and therefore it is called a uh, single uh, strip uh, scanning um, because of our uh, arrangement of our um, system uh, that is it is in the horizontal direction we have disparities only in the horizontal direction and therefore we have already always seen that the strikes of lines are vertical and only moved in this uh, vertical uh, horizontal direction this is the main reason um, using this kind of uh, strip scanning we can get a very precise and uh, version of a structured light and we can use this information to localize very with high accuracy the 3d locations of the surface so we can actually get a nice uh, curvatures of uh, the surfaces that we are scanning however this um, this scanning takes time because it needs a lot of images uh, so imagine and instead of going by every pixel you have to go by every line so it is still very complex and depending on the resolution of the light uh, sorry of the strip line um, it may take um, a lot of number of images so uh, let us see more uh, in a bit more mathematical sense how to find the uh, location of this uh, or how to find or how to localize this 3d point using this uh, structured light uh, setting so first what you have is you have your object here and you have laser or a projector whichever it is and you project this single strip of line light on this uh, object and then you capture the scene using a camera located at a point o and since you already know the location of the laser projector as well as the camera center and you already have uh, this um, how do you say this bright light shining in your image plane um, you know this because you already uh, because this light is very distinctive it has a high contrast and so on and so forth um, because you, f f uh, for the first in, in the beginning your camera takes a normal image of the uh, scene and then when you 
shine or switch on the laser uh, this strip of line is projected onto the object and therefore when you uh, superimpose these two Im images it is very easy to find out which is the um, light pattern that was uh, projected on the object and therefore um, using this information you can easily calculate the location of your uh, 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 of this line uh, projected line on the object and using this information you can calculate the distance of uh, the object in the real world so uh, what you do is from your um, you you generate a ray which uh, uh, starts from the optical center of the camera and it goes along uh, intersects the image plane uh, and goes and, in, and localizes at the at some point in the object and um, you can find using this information um, you can localize this point on the object and since you already know the geometry of this light pattern you can easily find the equation of the light plane using this information and uh, this is a the z is the depth of the, this particular point in the real world so uh, using that information you can easily um, find the uh, 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 surface geometry basically so when I'm using depth as well as uh, surface geometry it is interchangeable in this sense uh, that if you want to localize the depth of a particular point from the camera center and you are doing it for all the points on the object and therefore you are in essence uh, recreating the geometry or the surface of the object and therefore uh, these words are being used interchangeably but um, the main point is that using this triangulation technique with structured light uh, we are able to recreate uh, or we are able to capture, capture the depth as well as the surfaces of these uh, objects so uh, it is much more so now with this technique what we can do is we can we only have to iterate over planes instead of uh, over all the pixels as i told you before so it is much faster at least to half the time is required uh, it does not require a real projector any light source which has a, a sufficient intensity or sufficient contrast can be projected onto the surface for uh, and lasers are very good because they have a very coherent line light beam and um, they have a very narrow uh, dispersion um, um, dispersion angle so it can travel further with uh, without dispersing the uh, width of their light source so uh, a simple laser which is uh, relatively inexpensive can be used for creating this kind of triangulation and uh, recovering the shape of the objects in the real world so um, this is an example on the right hand side where the wheel uh, of the tire uh, or the tire is moved in, the, in one direction and the laser light is projected onto its surface to find out its geometry so this is probably a testing phase in the uh, production cycle of the tires where the laser is pointed uh, on the surface and uh, the images are captured of this surface and, and then the depth of these uh, grooves on the tires is computed to find out if there were defects or not. So imagine that these grooves are need to be very precise and need high resolution and this technique is providing that kind of resolution as um, uh, so that you can localize these small smaller grooves present on the uh, surface of the tires therefore this apparent technique is quite robust and gives you a high uh, accuracy of localization uh, so until now we have discussed uh, all the um, um, line scanners uh, single strip scanners they are essentially laser scanners we can get uh, high accuracies that we can localize points uh, less than 0 0.01 millimeters which is very good uh, the only problem is that it is quite um, slow so this is a similar setup where you uh, capture the object geometry uh, in uh, through a structured light uh, setup uh, on the right hand side there's a, this, this setup is probably not uh, using uh, the laser light because uh, it, it is harmful for the human eyes so uh, still it takes uh, almost 10 seconds for uh, recreating the geometry of the face of this uh, person sitting on the chair and uh, this kind of techniques have been used a lot in the industry uh, there are also 
uh, there were also a lot of ca laser scanners uh, portable laser scanners being uh, marketed by for example here in this minolta vivid 910 uh, 3d laser scanner is quite good however it uh, so it gives you a 3d uh, shape of the object that you are trying to scan um, but it's uh, so it's um, localization is quite precise but it is very sparse because there are some information or uh, some uh, gaps in the scanning which cannot be recovered and therefore you see this uh, dark spots or dark regions however whichever regions you can uh, the laser could uh, localize uh, sorry the method could localize they are um, um, they have a very, very high accuracy so this is a very nice uh, highly accurate 3D uh, geometry of the face uh, of this person on the left. So, but what if you want to go faster? So this this technique gives us uh, higher accuracy, but it is quite slow. It takes a lot of multiple stripes uh, is required. Um, in in um, lot of multiple stripes in the sense that if you have to you either you have to move the object across the light source or you have to move the light source across the object. To generate the whole object shape or the geometry um, what if but what if we have as you've seen in the beginning some examples of multiple stripes what if we have multiple stripes there were, and then uh, but in that case there will be correspondence problem because it will be difficult to recognize which stripe belongs to the uh, which color belongs to the which location because we cannot have as many colors uh, as we would like because if we increase the number of colors then uh, the way which we, with which we localize those uh, colors in the image will be become more ambiguous and therefore there are uh, some uh, give up, uh, some uh, compromises that you have to make depending on the kind of uh, accuracy and the speed that you need uh, now we will discuss a special type of pattern called binary coded light uh, stripping or gray, gray color coded lights uh, stripping and this can be extended um, to multi strip uh, multi multi color light stripping uh, but it will become more complex and it it will become it will require highly uh, more more um, correspondences so what is the idea idea of binary coding so what we do is uh, instead of having one light strip we project a binary coded light or a binary coded um, not a binary coded but this black and white uh, stripe on the surface of the object and then we capture that image and then we increase the uh, how do you say we increase the, the stripe pattern again and then we take again the image and then the third pattern we project we take the image again and similarly if your uh, width of the image is uh, 1024 the number of frames that you will need is uh, only about 10 because by the time you reach to the 10th pattern uh, the width of your uh, this stripe will decrease to one pixel and therefore um, in order to use this kind of binary coded idea all you need is uh, 2 raised to n minus 1 stripes in n images okay so uh, this is an example where there is a three binary coded patterns which allows to measure uh, the surface or it can be the surface of the image can be divided into eight sub regions so what it what we do is um, we project this pattern and we really try to follow this pixel here on the surface of this pattern uh, sorry this this pixel uh, this location of the object uh, its projection on this pattern is here so for this pattern it is on so white we consider on black we consider off uh, you can consider either way it's just a matter of uh, convention uh, so here let's say we say it is on so it means that for this pattern this um, pixel was localized on the left hand side and then in the next pattern it was localized on this pattern so it is off in the third one it is again on so similarly for every pixel we will be able to encode um, in a three by uh, three bit um, for this uh, three different patterns we will be able to encode for each and every pixel here uh, in a three bit fashion and and it would be easier to localize in which of these eight uh, sub regions uh, each of the point in the object are located so uh, why how, how is this uh, binary coding coding unit 
because um, what we do is we illuminate the surface over time for uh, 9 to 10 images and each stripe has a unique on and off pattern so white and black pattern is very unique for each and every uh, image so here in this uh, graph you can see that um, this fourth stripe or the fourth frame is uh, having uh, one uh, almost 16 uh, different patterns um, the one before that has eight different pattern uh, this this one has two uh, four different pattern and this one has two different pattern and if we try to localize this pattern um, this point in uh, in the image uh, we can get a pattern of on off on sorry on off off and on so this is how you recognize or identify the, co um, the code of that pixel and you assign each and every pixel to with one of these codes and therefore it will become easy to identify which plane uh, this pattern uh, this pixel lies on so similarly here example here is a very good example of all the patterns in eight different patterns here is considered uh, here it is on here it is off here it is on so it is one zero one and then up to the eighth uh, sorry up to the seventh pattern uh, it is zero zero one zero so these seven binary patterns are um, superimposed on this image one by one and this uh, so in the beginning let's say uh, it's a pattern of only white and black so half of the image on the left will be white and on the right it will be black and we track this point or this pixel which uh, on which pattern does this point belong so the, for the first pattern it will belong to the um, it is on it belongs to the white stripe and therefore for it, uh, for all the seven patterns uh, the code word for that pixel will be 101010 and this identifies the corresponding pattern stripe and now remember that we are because our setting is horizontal we just need to localize vertically where each and every pixel point belong to belongs to and through this we can reconstruct the shape of this object so this is this method is quite uh, efficient in this sense and it is time dependent depends on the number of uh, patterns you do want to project however it is um, it is fast so it is it is not so fast but it is faster than the previous method uh, so we can also create more complex patterns for example in this case the this this pattern looks much more um, complex than the black and white binary pattern and we you could um, and you could cre recreate the surface of the object on the left and if you increase the number of stripes again uh, more dense stripes than this uh, image on the top you are able to localize much in much more detail the shape of the hand however the more the number of stripes you increase and uh, it is po uh, possible that you are um, misunderstanding or mislocalizing a point lying on this blue uh, stripe uh, with this blue stripe and therefore it becomes um, a challenge and then this kind of uh, distinct features have to be resolved using correspondence algorithm and it will require more complexity so if you need very few images so uh, this yeah, this technique will require very few images because even with one or two images you will be able to localize using correspondence algorithm where these points are located but if you um, don't want to use the complex algorithm then you can use this uh, binary code coded uh, coding example and then you can use a sequence of patterns however this will be a bit slow so these are um, continuum of triangulation methods we have seen it with the single stripe it is very slow it requires but it is very robust it gives a very highly accurate uh, location of the of the point so uh, the the example where the uh, scientists uh, did a scanning with a laser stripe of uh, David's um, 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 how do you call David, David's idol um, it is considered as the most uh, it's, it's the slow one and it is but it is the most robust one and on the right hand side you have very fast methods but they are very fragile because they require highly complex uh, correspondence, algor correspondence algorithm and you need also highly complex uh, stripes and it is very difficult to have um, to to find uh, the right point belonging to a particular stripe and that is the bigger complex challenge here and in the midway you have some 
different algorithms which have multi frames and multiple stripes so there is a nice um, a scale of algorithms available for triangulation methods now we will talk a little bit about uh, one aspect which we have not considered so until now uh, we have considered structured light onto the surface which have uniform color so in those cases it is easier to recreate or reconstruct the um, uh, shape of the object however if the object itself has some textures and your pattern of light has uh, some overlap with the shape or the color of uh, this uh, of this texture then then your uh, recovered uh, structure will be not as efficient as it was for uniform uh, for objects with uni uniform color so illumination another texture can also disturb the measurements of uh, depth using structured light so this is a very big drawback uh, we have to keep in mind this uh, aspect when you're and using structured light so connect sensors as you already uh, might have known this it comes with the xbox uh, 360 is uh, marketed as a most motion sensing device however it is based on uh, structured light what it does what it has is in the middle here you, it has a normal rgb camera to take the normal image of the scene in of your living room wherever you are uh, this is the light source um, you will not be able to see the light source because it's an infrared light source uh, which is invisible to human eye and this is the um, camera which captures the reflected pattern of this uh, from this light source and using the structured light uh, algorithm uh, it is able to recreate uh, the shape of the living room and now you can imagine what kind of pattern uh, does this camera, uh, does this source uh, project such that it, uh, a Kinect is able to localize your body uh, so efficiently while you are playing the game, right? Um, this camera setup also has multiple hardware features in addition to this uh, structured light um, setup. It also has uh, four different microphones distributed along its length which also help it, helps it to localize the person in the image and uh, based on different voice sources so uh, this Kinect is a very nice efficient camera but nowadays uh, a lot of uh, laptops even iPhone 10 has this depth sensor uh, which is using essentially the structured light uh, algorithm behind uh, the scenes where it throws uh, points of uh, infrared um, um, so it throws a lot of points and it creates a point cloud based on uh, the reflected uh, color and then it tries to recreate the shape of your face and that's how it's uh, recognizing your uh, uh, face based on your uh, based on it's based on your um, uh, face structure profile and that's um, a, uh, an advanced uh, technique of uh, bio identification uh, so Kinect has this uh, range camera where the projector projects uh, an infrared light pattern as I told you so there are I think around some thousands of points are being projected and they have, um, Microsoft has um, I think a patent for this kind of uh, pattern light source because it is unique and it is the, um, the point of the whole and uh, how the whole Kinect works is based on how this pattern of light is uh, spread and therefore it is very important and I think that's why they got this um, uh, patent on this special laser point pattern uh, so it essentially generates a speckle pattern which uh, along the Z direction um, so what it has it says it has an IR camera which goes through a holographic diffuser in front of it and it is able to generate this speckle pattern which you can see on the right top image uh, th this uh, this image is taken uh, so these points that you are able to see are for or of uh, infrared um, light um, spectrum but uh, it was captured using a special camera okay uh, so what uh, Microsoft Kinect is able to do is it is able to position uh, the points in the real world and it's uh, trying to uh, extract or um, estimate the depth using this uh, pattern uh, however there are a lot of problems with it because uh, this, these points are not too precise so the resolution is not too high however for the purposes of playing the game uh, this is enough uh, and on the right bottom 
right hand side bottom this image is a depth image that was recreated from the connect uh, camera um, you can see a lot of problems here so for example during near the edges of the laptop it's not easy to it, it, it is not easy for the range camera to locate the depth there so what happens is that if a pattern is there on an edge uh, it is not able to tell whether it is far or near so there is a there is a problem um, what it is able to do is localize uniform uh, objects and localize um, points lying on uniform uh, uh, shapes however um, most of the uh, points that are that are recreated here on the right hand side with these different colors are interpolated because there are only a few thousand uh, spectral pattern through which the Kinect is able to estimate the depth for only those pattern points and the rest are estimated. Uh, for example here and it, what, what it uses is a, a windowed uh, cross correlation so for example if you keep a book here this pattern uh, moves this pattern of the speckle the speckled pattern that was projected by the Kinect it moves and using this so on the right hand side you can see that when you keep the book here this uh, pattern uh, has a little movement and using this movement of points uh, camera, the Kinect camera is able to capture this uh, depth and because it has this um, light capturing uh, third camera which captures this um, bouncing back of the speckled pattern uh, it is able to estimate the depth of uh, these objects in the real uh, in, the, in the in the real scene so this shift of this pattern is similar to the binocular stereo shift in um, in one sense so when you when the camera is able to if you put one object and you have switched on the camera this pattern will shift a little and through this shift uh, the Kinect is able to estimate uh, that there is a um, uh, the shape of the object or there is a movement and it uh, tries to recognize the object there and this is a completely different system in opposition to uh, structured light uh, this is uh, purely based on um, light reflectance and uh, right uh, the time travel I'm sorry not time travel, not time travel but the travel um, differences between when you the differences in the time when the light is projected and when you sense it back so this is also an Xbox um, a Xbox system where it is also using a uh, Kinect camera it's a different kind of camera and in this case the distance is measured using uh, speed of uh, using the time difference of the travel of this light so a short pulse is emitted and each time uh, this pulse is returned back so there is a sensor uh, in the system which measures the um, return of this uh, light, light pattern onto that pixel and calculates the differences between the time of uh, um, the release of this pattern and when it receives and through this difference in calculation it is able to estimate the distance uh, of the object and these are the image sources so we are at the end of our um, uh, uh, lecture series uh, so thank you very much and until next time